I have been long after this boot by Parkhurst. This is their Delaware model with the broke cap toe. I've been uh, looking for a pair of these for a long time and I'm, I'm really glad to get this pair uh, done in uh, Mariam's horse butt in dark brown. How are you going? Welcome to Bootlosophy and if you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm filming on, the Wajit people. Now today I'm taking a look at Parkhurst's uh, Delaware boot in uh, Merriam's veg tan uh, horse butt leather in dark brown. Um, I have been after a pair of Delawares for a long time. Uh, I started looking at them after Andrew had finished making them. Uh, and so I've got quite a few pairs of Allen boots and Richmond boots. But this one with the uh, brogued cap toe is called the Delaware. And it's been missing from my Parker's collection. So I'm really glad to get this one. Editor Tech here. I forgot to add when I was uh, recording the impressions video uh, that when I bought these boots, I addressed them to Dale at Dale's Leatherworks so that he could actually do a review before on sending them to me. Uh, so this is actually <laughs> the second of two reviews. Go and look at Dale's Leatherworks and you'll be able to see his unboxing video uh, of these boots. And then so this runs on as an initial detailed impressions video. Enjoy. So as I said, this is Parkhurst's Delaware boot. Um, Parkhurst have basically uh, two designs for their cap toe boots. Their plain toe boot is called the Allen. Uh, the plain cap toe boot is called the Richmond and this one with the brogue cap toe detailing is called the Delaware. Uh, this one is, is made from uh, Mariam Tannery, uh, the Italian Tannery's uh, veg tan horse butt leather. So it's actually quite firm in temper and um, a little tricky to break in because of that firmness, particularly in the, in the back backstay area. If you take a look at the design, uh, it's a fairly simple cap toe service boot design. You obviously have the cap toe and the vamp, and then you have the vamp piece attached to the uh, uh, tongue. You have two quarter pieces, and then you have a single piece backstay that covers the heel counter and goes up the back. So fairly standard. Uh, the hardware is sort of antique brass, uh, five uh, eyelets and three speed hooks. Um, these are the sort of bent over speed hooks. The um, uh, hardware has been pressed very nicely so that there's no scratchy bits, which often happens. Um, it's on a low block heel, uh, leather stacked with a uh, Ridgeway style uh, outsole and uh, top lift. And I'll talk about that when I talk about construction. Now, let me talk a little bit about Parker's brand. Uh, started by Andrew Savisco, a former financial analyst in 2018. Uh, and Andrew discovered his love for uh, heritage style boots and in particular uh, until COVID came along and basically shut down all his suppliers in the US, really wanted to make uh, his supply chain inherent within the US. Uh, as I said, COVID really struck a, a pretty fatal blow because his factory shut down uh, and a lot of his uh, local suppliers shut down. Through some luck and introduction from his other factory partners, he was introduced to a uh, Spanish uh, factory in which he now makes uh, pretty much all of his boots, although he is exploring some avenues in Portugal as well. Um, if you want to have a look at Andrew's uh, uh, journey, including some of his troubles, go and check out my interview with him up here. Andrew builds his uh, uh, boots on two lasts that he designed himself. The 18 last, which um, kind of disappeared off his, off his catalog about three years, four years ago. Uh, and the 602 last, so-called because that was the serial number of the landing ship tank that his grandfather served on. The 602 last uh, graduated into a slightly roomier 602 last when he moved to Spain. And then the 602 M last, which is even slightly more roomy, uh, around the toes, but we're talking two millimeters, uh, gives you a lot of comfort 
in these modern builds, but they also give you a bit of room, which I'll talk about when I'm talking sizing and comfort. So let's talk about my first impressions of the construction of these boots. And as usual, I'll work my way from the bottom up. Here's a very interesting point. This looks like a Ridgeway sole from the UK brand Ridgeway uh, because of the swirls and patterns that you get on that sort of boot. But this is actually a proprietary uh, sole, uh, specially made for Andrew's boots by a Spanish manufacturer. Now, the reason why Andrew had to get these specially made is that what he's found is that brands like Vibram and Ridgeway uh, and uh, you know other branded soles don't actually fit his last, which is a combination last being quite narrow in the heel and the waist and quite wide in the uh, ball of the foot before it comes back down into the almond toe. And what he's found that I think in the larger sizes, tens and so on, the, the positioning of the studs and the sole itself did not match his uh, last. So they, they get a little bit skew wifty. And in particular, the Ridgeway sole was guilty of that. So he's had to design uh, and get made a Ridgeway style sole with all the walls, uh, but in a, in a positioning that suits his last. And that's really interesting. So obviously from the bottom coming up, the construction is a Goodyear welted uh, construction method. Now what that means is there is a uh, piece of leather in a strip that goes all the way around the boot. So it's a 360 degree Goodyear welt. On the inside, the inside of the welt is sewn to the insole and the turned in uppers. And then on the outside, as you can see here, uh, it's stitched through the outside of the welt all the way through to the, to the bottom of the insole. And the, the advantages of that is it is water resistant because there are no stitch holes that go from outside to inside. There's like two stitches, one staying on the inside and one staying on the outside. Uh, the second advantage is that it is recraftable or resolable. So when the sole wears out, um, all you have to do is, or your cobbler has to do, is to cut the stitches, remove, peel off that rubber um, outsole, glue on a new rubber outsole, and then restitch it again through the outside edge of the welt. So you're never actually touching the inside uh, of the boot unless it's, it seriously needs recrafting. This case, uh, it's a split reverse welt, and you can tell because of the raw edge of the rubber that's, of the leather that's been pressed up against the boot. A storm welt, which is, looks similar, is actually where the ridge that you see here is actually carved into the welt and then pushed up against the um, edge of the boot. I, what I really like about this is the way that the edge of the sole is stained, but not the top of it. And that's natural, so that when you're actually standing, and particularly in the sun, this turns out a very dark chocolate brown with that light natural uh, contrast on the edge, which I love. Uh, in terms of construction, it's, it, it, look, it's, it's structurally very sound, but um, you can quite easily see the joint of the welt. Now, in many cases, Grant Stone is a, is a top example of this, Oak Street Bootmakers as well. They do make sure that the welt edges, the two ends of the welt that meet, uh, are scarfed nicely and then fitted very nicely so you can hardly tell that there is a joint there. Parkhurst has always had this rather rough and ready, uh, work booty, uh, made for function style construction. So I don't find this unattractive at all. I, I quite like it. Uh, and it, it's, it's made in such a way that you know that this is uh, built like a, like a rugged service boot. Um, quite different from, say, the Grant Stones, which has dressier versions of this type of boot. Um, looking at the, the, the heel construction, there are several layers of leather uh, stacked up there before you put on the, the uh, top lift, so that's really quite solid. And then if you look at the edge, um, there is a, I would say, four to five millimeter thick uh, leather midsole. So there's quite a lot of leather uh, under there to, to work with. Inside the boot, if you think about it, this uh, welt creates a sort of uh, barrier on the outside of the boot. So it creates a cavity on the inside of the boot. That's filled with cork in this case. Uh, and inserted into that cork in this junction here is a steel shank, which gives you a support so that when you're standing, it doesn't collapse down into, that, into this gap. And it also gives you a bit of torsional stability when you're walking on rough ground. 
So all of those things are fairly traditional ways of constructing a boot. If you uh, start moving on up, the uppers are made from uh, Mariam Tannery out of Italy. Uh, they, they, this is their veg tan uh, horse butt. Now, horse butt is actually the layer of leather that's on top of shell cordovan, which is a membrane. Uh, shell cordovan is split from the horse butt. And in some cases, if you look on the inside of horse butt, you can see bits of shell, like this is really smooth with some swirling sort of colors in here. In this case, it's not. It's a, a suede rough out feel to it. So the, the shell cordovan has been properly split away from it. In terms of temper, it's actually quite stiff. Um, I've only worn these for maybe four days, and I'm telling you, it's kind of hard to break in, particularly this shaft here, uh, which when you're pointing your foot forward to walk, kind of is so stiff that it digs through, uh, through the, your heel. The actual um, flex of the boot is not so much of a problem, and uh, the, it flexes just at the right place at the ball. If you keep coming on up, the tongue is semi-gusseted, as all Parker's tongues are, up to about the, the last eyelet. So, theoretically, it's pretty water resistant up to that level if you splash through a puddle. Uh, as I said earlier, the hardware is very nicely backed, so you don't get any scratchy bits on the tongue, um, which is fairly thick leather in itself. The stitching, I mean, that, that broguing on the cap toe is really nice. Uh, it, it's a very finely detailed uh, punching through to get to the broguing. And the stitching, two rows of stitches in one row, is very nicely, very cleanly stitched. All through the boot, the stitching on the back stay, the quarter panel, uh, the uh, collar and the lace edgings, very clean, very precise, absolutely nothing wrong with it. Now to sizing. Um, I spoke earlier about Andrew's evolution of his 602 last to a 602M last, which was initially created by him uh, to last his Chelsea boots and to last his Niagara uh, mock toe stitched boots. Uh, that gave a little bit of extra room in the, in the ball of the foot. So he's now, I think, primarily using the 602M on pretty much all of his models. Uh, and so this is no different. If you are familiar with Parkhurst 602 last, you know, to me, it's one of my favorite lasts because it grips at the heel, I think starting at a B width or even a C width, somewhere around that. Uh, it's a similar sort of um, narrow uh, uh, width at the, at the waist, and then it opens up to an E width at the ball of the foot before it closes down again in the arm and toe. So to me with, you know, D width but slightly duck feet uh, feet, that really suits uh, uh, me as a, as a last for a boot. The 602M, I find a little roomier. So when I wear these in my usual size, I do find that they're a better fit if I wear thick socks. I am not 100% sure, and at, at, at the sort of cost of posting things backwards and forwards between Australia and the US, I'm not game at coming down another half a size. Uh, where I stand with sizes is I'm an eight and a half US in the Brannock device uh, in a D width. Uh, and I usually wear size eight in a D width in most boots. So this is a size eight. Parkers do make some wider sizes, uh, but not, not in every model. And to me on the 602M last, this 8D, whereas the old 602 fits me absolutely perfectly, is just a little bit roomy through here. So I do find that uh, if I'm wearing his 602M last boots, I will have to wear thicker socks and I'm not game enough to come down a half a size. Andrew doesn't recommend that anyway. It's weird because if you actually measured it, as Andrew has, it's really bigger by about like two millimeters at the ball. So uh, pay, perhaps it's psychological, I don't know, but I, I, I swear it feels wider. Uh, in terms of comfort, there's so much like, real leather and cork on the inside with a, uh, a leather sort of uh, comfort uh, glued in insole, that this is a really comfortable boot. And I love the Ridgeway sole for comfort. The Ridgeway sole is quite grippy. 
and it doesn't pick up any dirt like Commando Souls, where the, um, what would you call these, the valleys in Commando Soul boots tend to be quite narrow and they pack dirt and mud in them. With the Ridgeway, with these sort of wider sort of uh, valleys, I find that you can uh, walk through mud and then when you get home, simply just tap them or, or, or knock them off and you don't track mud through. It doesn't pack into these grooves as easily as uh, on a Commando. So I really love them. And they also give, uh, because of the compound of the rubber, just enough shock absorption to be comfortable, yet sturdy enough that you feel you're not you know, squishing into rocks and feeling every, every uh, corner of rock or stone or whatever. So comfort, I'd give it top marks. I do have to say though, um, and I said it earlier, the temper of this Veg 10 horse butt is pretty stiff. <laughs> uh, it creaks a lot, like all, like all Veg 10, you can hear it. Just as I squish it. And you can hear the layer of uh, 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 Capto uh, on the lining leather. So like all Veg 10, it does squeak. But it is, it is stiff, it is tough. Uh, you know, three or four days, two or three or four days of wearing, that's not a break-in. I'm going to have to wear these for a good couple of weeks, I think, before it softens enough that it's not, the edges are not digging into my Achilles tendon, um, even though everything else is, is reasonably fine. It's, I find it's this bit that's really hard to break in. Zero heel slip because this fits me perfectly. And to value. Uh, this particular pair sells for, I think it's 488 US dollars at the time of recording, so it's nearly $500. Now, the other Parkhurst boots are in the uh, low 400s. So this one sells for a bit more. And in this territory, it compares to uh, Truman boots uh, and uh, people like uh, Grant Stone are $100 cheaper. But I do want to point out that Mariam Veg Tan horse butt is not a cheap leather. Uh, and, and you can tell why if you put these on. They're very sturdy. Uh, the Veg Tan itself, I think, gives it a, a fantastic tannage. All in all, this price range of 300 to 500 is a really tricky, um, highly competitive price range. You have boots in the uh, low 300s. Um, you have the high 300s like, like Grant Stone. Uh, a lot of the other Parkers models are in the low 400s. You get the mid to high 400s from Truman. You get the high 400s from Oak Street Bootmakers. I mean, it is a, it is a, it's a fairly packed price range. Parkers, though, I think comes in really nicely. Uh, there are variations in price because of the different uh, uh, uppers used, and you can understand that. But what they do give you, I think, is a well put together package. So in that sense of being really well constructed, being really well designed, really terrific last, uh, the construction and the materials, all natural leather, uh, all natural cork, uh, good rubber, etc. I think they come together as a pretty good package. So there you go. Um, I hope you like this review. It's, it's not an unboxing, even though these are very new. Uh, one of the things about Parkhurst boots is that they do change their makeups very frequently. And what's frustrating for a boot reviewer is if I come back in three months time, you know, if I do an unboxing now, and then I come back in three months time and I do a full review, by the time I come back in three or four months, Parkers might not be offering this anymore. <laughs> so um, instead of doing an unboxing and then a later you know, full review, I thought I would do a, a, a really detailed first impressions now. And uh, if they're still offering this in three or four months time after I've been wearing this well enough to, to know how it wears in, I'll bring you that other one. So um, I hope you like this video. You know what to do, click on like. And if you haven't subscribed, you know, please do, because it really will help me grow my channel and reach out to more people. Uh, and that really then helps me to create more content. So click on like, click on subscribe. And until then, take care. I'll see you the next time.